can you paint a map of what are chimps, gorillas, and humans, like how we're related and what you find fascinating about each? In Africa, straddling the equator, there is a strip of rainforest that relies on the combination of uh, high temperatures and rainfall that you get around the equator. That rainforest goes into about 22 countries. And throughout those countries, uh, you have chimpanzees, although they've gone extinct in two of them. Uh, in uh, just a fraction of them, but was it sorry, five countries, uh, you've got gorillas, where there are mountains. And in one country, on the left bank of the Great Congo River, you have bonobos. So in the African forest, you've got these three African apes, the only African apes, all of which are very similar in much of their way of life. They walk on their knuckles uh, through the forest, looking for fruit trees and eating herbs when they can't find fruits. Gorillas represent the oldest chain. So about 10 million years ago, maybe as recently as 8 million years ago, the ancestor of gorillas broke off from the ancestor leading to chimps and bonobos and humans. So they've probably remained very similar now to what, uh, very, very similar to what they were then. They were probably um, the largest apes uh, living in montane areas and uh, spending more time uh, eating just uh, herbs, stems, uh, not so vitally dependent on fruit, and uh, living in, um, if it was like the present, uh, groups up to about 50 stable groups with uh, one alpha male who was in charge. Uh, gorillas are wonderfully slow uh, and inquisitive compared to chimps and bonobos. Yeah. I had the privilege of um, spending a, a week or two with gorillas um, at, uh, at Diane Fossey's camp when, before she was murdered. And I, I, I went out with uh, two women, uh, Kelly and Barb, uh, to a particular group. And uh, there was a, a young female in the group called Simba, and Simba approached us and stared at the two women. And then she came towards me and uh, she very deliberately reached out her knuckles and touched me on the forehead. She was watched in doing this by a young male who was quite keen on her. Mm -hmm. And he was called Digit. Mm -hmm. And about five minutes later, Digit stood in front of us on the path. And Kelly was in front of me, uh, and then there was Bob, and then there was me. And he came charging down the path, and he sidestepped around Kelly, and he sidestepped around Bob, and me, he just knocked with his arm and sent me flying about five yards into the bushes. <laughs> yeah. And I loved the way that that was a very deliberate response, and I loved the way that Simba had been so interested in me and, and held my eye. Chimps and bonobos never hold your eye, but gorillas really look as though they're trying to sort of figure out, what are you thinking about? Mm -hmm. That was a species that has, goes back for uh, something like 10 million years. In that situation, was there a game being played? Um, well, I mean, I, I felt that Digit was telling me, I don't want you messing with, with Simba. But was Simba using you? Oh, I see. Well, that's a fun idea. Uh, I don't <laughs> see why she should be using me, but you mean testing how yeah, strongly the she was prepared to intervene to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, that's, that's, that's come straight out of a sort of adolescent high school playbook. All right. Well, that's, that's <laughs> no, all. No, no, no. There's nothing wrong with it for that. For that. Uh, um, yeah. I don't, uh, I don't know. I never thought of that. And uh, you never know. It's, uh, it's possible. Uh, so, so, yeah. So, okay. So, this is an ancient branch of the evolutionary tree uh, yeah. is gorillas that led to gorillas. Gorillas. Um, 
So then the next thing that happened on the evolutionary tree was uh, six or seven million years ago when uh, you have uh, the line uh, between chimps and bonobos on the one hand and humans on the other splitting. And basically what happened is that uh, at that point, a chimp-like ancestor uh, leaves the forest, gets isolated in an area outside the forest and adapts, and that becomes the Australopithecines. And meanwhile, the chimpanzees uh, and bonobo ancestor continues in the forest. And later what happens is that one branch of that crosses the Congo River and becomes the bonobos. That was only about two million years ago, maybe one million years ago. Now, the chimps that remained in the forest throughout this time and occupied all the countries across uh, from east, west to east Africa now, um, again, we assume that they're pretty similar to the ones that live nowadays, uh, where there's some variation from, from west to east. And these are animals that live in um, social communities of uh, between, say, 20 and, uh, and 200. And they, you can have a lot of them in one group, but they never come together in a single unit. These are, they share an area, a, a, a community territory, and that area is defended by males, and within it, females uh, wander and bring up their young independently. And um, the females are very scared about um, the possibility that males will be mean to their infants. And in order to avoid them doing that, they do their best to mate with every single male in the group multiple times, as if to give a memory in that male of, yeah, yeah, I remembered you, so I'm not going to be mean to your baby. Mm -hmm. So what's wonderful about chimps? Well, you know, <laughs> as we've spoken about them, you know, they are creative and um, uh, and sort of amazingly human-like. Yeah. But I love the the sort of, you know, the quiet moments. And, and here's one. Um, I've got uh, uh, two chimps who are uh, grooming each other on a day when they are utterly exhausted. They've walked um, 11 kilometers the day before, up and down hills. And uh, on this particular day, all they do is they get to one tree and they eat from that tree. And other than that, they only walk about 100 yards and they go back to sleep in the nest in which they woke up. So they're utterly exhausted. Um, and they're just eating nonstop because they're trying to recover uh, their energy. And uh, this is uh, Hugh and Charlie. And we think they were probably brothers, though we never actually got the genetic evidence to, to prove it. Well, um, I never remember now who it is, but uh, let's say that um, uh, they both come down from the tree and um, they're both carrying branches of the food. They're eating actually seeds from these branches. Uh, they're both uh, engaged even in the midday sun when they want to come down and, and shade themselves for a bit on the ground. Um, they're still eating. But then Charlie finishes his branch mm -hmm. and uh, he starts grooming Hugh. And uh, Hugh continues eating from his branch. Charlie eventually gets bored of this after a few minutes. And he reaches out and he lifts the branch from which Hugh is still taking seeds and puts it over his head and puts it behind his back as far as possible away from Hugh. Mm -hmm. Hugh doesn't do anything. He just finishes his mouthful and then he turns to Charlie and grooms him. So this very polite way of saying, will you groom me please, has worked. Then Hugh grooms around Charlie's back and around uh, to the right side and then down his arm to a point where he can reach the branch again. And then he picks up the branch and continues. Uh, Nonchalantly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so in other words, you know, they, they, a very sort of simple little strategy, yeah. but it just shows the, the courtesy with which they can uh, treat each other. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the days I love with chimps are when you see that sort of thing, or when you see mothers just lying in a, a sunlit patch in the forest uh, with their babies bouncing on top of them, um, just uh, uh, having a, a wonderful, peaceful time. And that's, you know, that's what a, most of their lives are like. So chimpanzees are the species that kind of unites the rest of the apes, because a gorilla is in many ways a just a big version of a chimpanzee. If you can 
sort of engineer a chimpanzee in your mind to be bigger, it basically turns into a gorilla. Mm. And then bonobos on the left bank of the Congo River uh, are a like a domesticated form of of a chimpanzee, but obviously humans didn't domesticate them, so they're self-domesticated. Mm -hmm. They are less aggressive, and they show all the marks of domestication that domesticated animals do in compared to wild animals in their bones. Mm -hmm. So they have reduced differences between males and females, in which the males are more like females. They have smaller brains. They have uh, shorter faces, uh, smaller teeth, and smaller bodies. All the things that domesticated animals show. And, and bonobos live in this environment in a strikingly peaceful way compared to the chimpanzees. There's no indication that they will have these aggressive kills uh, and enough data now to show that there's a statistical difference in the frequency with which it would happen. And, um, and bonobos are famously uh, erotic. Uh, the females have uh, enlarged sexual parts, mm -hmm. uh, which swell to particularly a large size compared to the uh, female chimpanzees. And um, the females have a lot of interactions with each other in which they excitedly rub their clitorises together and, um, and say, appear to have orgasms. And wow. th these occur in the context of um, some kind of social tension. And they sometimes happen before, they sometimes happen after the social tension, and they seem to be devices uh, the, these interactions for um, ensuring that everyone's friends and uh, reducing the chances that they're actually going to get into a fight. So it's a kind of uh, conflict resolution through uh, through through sex or some kind of pleasurable sexual experience. Well, it, it's often characterized as make love, not war. That's right. Make love, not war.